Joining me right now is Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, who helped craft the new policy and was with President Trump in Miami. Senator, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Wow, you. what a reception you, you, you uh, yeah. received with this new policy. Why do you think people want to see this policy change? Why is it so important to you, Senator? Well, first of all, it's uh, democracy and human rights in our region is critical to the United States. Look at the migratory pressure, whether it's people coming across the border from Central America or Mexico or people on rafts coming from Haiti or Cuba. It's all driven by one thing, and that is the lack of uh, political freedoms and the lack of human rights and uh, economic rights. And so the United States has a national security interest and stability in our region. If you look at the Western Hemisphere, every country in the region has had at least one free and fair election in the last decade and a half or so, except for one. Cuba has not had a free and fair election in almost 65 or 70 years. That needs to change. Now, the Obama policy towards Cuba made all sorts of concessions. Those concessions have allowed the Cuban military, which controls upwards of 50, 60 percent of their economy, to enrich itself and to tighten its grip through a monopoly that they control. And we're reversing that. The president is reversing that. What he is saying is, if Americans travel to Cuba now, you will have to spend your money with private individual Cubans, not with the Cuban military. That is a very appropriate thing. And I don't understand how anyone could argue that we should not have a policy that enriches the Cuban people instead of the Cuban military. This weekend, when you were with President Trump, it seemed like the two of you have just put aside any uh, differences that you had and were, were truly working together. Why the change from your standpoint? standpoint. Has President Trump done something uh, beyond this that has changed your relationship with him? Yeah, I, I just think this whole relationship thing is overblown. He was a competitor of mine out of 17 people that ran for president. It's like asking two boxers, are you mad that he punched you in the face in the ring? <laughs> and is he mad that you punched him back? I mean, that's why you're boxing. That's what you do when you're competitors. You go at each other. When the race is over, the race is over. You don't, boxers don't keep punching themselves in the dressing room or when they see each other at a restaurant the next day. And it's the same in politics. We ran against each other. He won the Republican nomination. I'm a Republican. I'm not going to support Hillary Clinton. He got elected. He's the president of the United States. You don't have to agree with the president of your party on every single issue for him in order to, for, to want him to succeed. President Trump's success is America's success. It's not his individual success. Of course I want the president to be successful. And in this particular case, the president uh, made uh, it was keeping a campaign commitment that he made in my state, in my community, uh, where I grew up. And uh, of course I'm going to help him uh, do it in the right and best way possible. That's terrific, Senator. I want to get back to that and ask you about working with the president because you've got a lot on the agenda. And I want to find out our viewers really want to understand where you are on that. But first, let me get, the, get, get this from you because the president did face some pressure from U.S. businesses. I mean, you consider the fact that JetBlue, other airlines have been flying uh, to, to Cuba. So he didn't roll back everything President Obama did. Uh, and, and it basically protected some of the airlines and transportation companies that they can continue to do business, correct? What, what was behind that? But it wasn't pressure from the businesses. I never asked them to roll those back because if those airlines can't fly to Cuba, then the people who coordinate those trips are charter companies. You know who controlled those charter companies? The Cuban military. So I would much rather have American Airlines flying people into Cuba on regular flights than have them chartering their planes to a company that's a pro-Castro company operating in the United States of America. Again, this is not about denying Americans access to Cuba. This is about complying with the law, first and foremost. And second, it's about ensuring that once they get to Cuba, you know, the plane trip is one thing. Once they get to Cuba, Americans will have to spend their dollars and their money on individual Cubans, not at facilities owned and controlled by the Cuban military. And that was the, the, the rationale behind that. Senator, let me, let me uh, ask you to give us some clarity on the agenda right now. There is a health care bill sitting in the Senate. A lot of people are wondering what the progress looks like because you've got to get health care done before you move on to tax reform. You've got big items on the agenda. The Dems are pushing back every day to try to obstruct that agenda and, and, and in hopes that the president doesn't get anything done uh, in this first year. Where is the health care bill right now? What would be the timeline and clarity from your standpoint that you could give us? Well, and there is a lot of confusion about that. There is a group in the Senate working with input from all of us. Any one of us senators that wants to, in the Republican side, who wants to have input on the Republican replacement bill has the opportunity to do so. That group is going to produce a first draft, so to speak, a starting point. 
But after that happens, that doesn't become the law. That's got to work its way through a committee. It's got to work its way through floor action. Every senator will have a right to offer amendments to change the law and have input that way. So this is part of a process. This is just the first step in the process. It is not unusual or unique for a product like this to begin its first step among a core group and then to expand to the broader group of the entire Senate. It's a better process than the one they did Obamacare, which is they rammed it down the throat of the American people using all sorts of you know measures to kind of get it through as quickly as possible, where Nancy Pelosi famously said, let's pass it so we can see what's in it. That's not the way this is going to happen. And of course, even if it passes the Senate, it still has to go back to the House for them to debate it and them to look at it. So. Uh, people are pretending around here like there's, it's going to go from some back room in the Senate right to the president's desk. There's a lot that's going to happen in between. People will know everything that's in it, and there will be opportunities to change parts of it that someone doesn't agree with. Well, what, what opportunities? I mean, here we are, you know, close to July. You want to execute an agenda um, this year so that perhaps you don't lose seats next year in 2018. Do you think you can get this right. done by July 4th? I do. Well, I don't know about July 4th, but I do believe it can get done. And let me, I would say this, I would rather us do it right than do it fast. Because no matter what passes, if it isn't good or it has some unintended consequence, the president is going to be held responsible for that. Republicans are going to be held responsible for that. Let's not repeat the mistakes the Democrats made. The Democrats rushed their product through because they were afraid they're going to lose their 60 vote majority in the, in the Senate. And they paid the price for eight years because of that. And the American people paid an even greater price. We don't want to repeat that mistake. This is complicated. It's 50 states, 50 different marketplaces for insurance. We're going to get it right. And that may take a little longer than people want, but in the end, you're going to get a better product and you're dealing with something called health care, which is a massive part of our economy, not to mention has a huge impact on people's lives. So, so you think you can get health care and tax reform done in 2017, or are we talking 18? Well, I think health care will, will happen this year. Tax reform, we'll see. We're working on that now. There's a component of it that I'm working with Ivanka Trump on, which is the pro-family component of it. And we argue that you know parents should be able to keep more of their own money to raise their children. Uh, we're a pro-family party. We believe in strengthening families. And in fact, we'll have a meeting this week with her and a number of senators and House members to begin to lay out that portion of the agenda. But I, I do think tax reform, these things can work simultaneously. You don't have to, you don't have to wait to finish on health care before you start formulating ideas on tax reform, and that's happening right now. And, and real quick, uh, Senator, before you go, you were one of the few who really uh, put it out there when you when you uh, uh, interviewed Jim Comey at the testimony two weeks ago, and you said to him, look, isn't it interesting that everything got leaked except the fact that Donald Trump was not under investigation? Now there are calls for Bob Mueller to go. Should President Trump fire Bob Mueller because of uh, conflict no. of interest, his relationship with Jim Comey? No. No, a couple things. First of all, with Comey, I wasn't being hostile. I was just basically, in the end, asking why you know, all the president asked for is that the Comey do for him what he ended up doing for himself, which is putting information out there to, to put out his version or his side of the, of the truth. That's, uh, that's my, really the point of my questioning. And as far as Bob Mueller's concerned, let me just say this. The best thing that can happen for the president, the best thing for the president and for America is for there to be a full and thorough investigation I don't have any reason to doubt the credibility of Bob Mueller to conduct this, and I honestly believe this, and I say it again. Let there be a full investigation on everything. Let it all come out. Let it all be looked at, because that is in the best interest of the president. I honestly, deeply, and truly believe that. All right. We will leave it there. Senator Rubio, good to see you. Thanks so much, sir. Thank you. We appreciate Thanks. it. Senator Marco Rubio joining us.